Microsoft Excel has several different of these text-based functions. Left, right, and mid, that's just a few of them. We got length or len function. We're gonna take a look at another one here called search. Now I do wanna point out that there's actually two functions that are very similar to one another. We're gonna take a look at search, but there's another one called find. And as another homework assignment for you, I recommend taking a look at the difference between these two functions. All right, now here's the search function, and here's the setup, here's the example. Open in front of you, I've got the exercise file, once again, that comes with this course, and I've got the tab called search function active in front of you. Here, I've got a simple little list, a few names, and two empty columns. Now, in the name column, we've got two values. We got first name and last name. I'm sure that if you haven't already, you will at some point run into a list that's formatted such as this. Two values, like first name and last name, combined into one cell. Maybe it's not name, maybe it's address, or some, some other value where I really want to break them up into two separate columns. All right. Now, there's multiple different ways to do this. Some of you maybe use text to columns to accomplish this. Text to columns is great. If you haven't used it, it's on your data tab. You can select a group of data, and based on a delimiter, something that separates the values, you can break them up into their individual values. In this case, we've got a space. Every single name here has a space that separates the two values, first name and last name. So text to columns could be a good candidate in this situation but it's not always effective. So what we're gonna take a look at here is utilizing the search function and perhaps some other functions to help us break this up, make this a little more robust so it can handle just about any situation that you throw at it. Take a look. So I'm gonna jump into the first name column. I wanna know the first name of each of these names, right? Patrick, Joe, Brent, Joe, Martin, Okay. I want to break this up. Well, earlier, if you took part of this course, we talked about left, right, and mid. Well, could I use one of those functions to extract the first name out of the A column? Well, sure. I could do this. I could jump into B2. B2. I could say equals left, because the first names are on the left-hand side. Open up a parentheses. Wants to know two things, right? Wants to know where the text is at. Well, that's easy. That's an A2 comma, and it wants to know how many characters. Well, what's Patrick got here? It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. I'll type in seven, close my parentheses, hit my enter key. There we go, there's Patrick. Now, if I copy this down, doo, 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 doo. oh, what's wrong? I'm getting Joe Tho and Brent B and Joe Pav and Martin. Mm, I'm getting getting perhaps too much information here. Okay. Martin looks pretty good, but the rest of them, I got pieces of their last names. Well, the function that I created here, using left, had a hard number. It was always going to grab seven. So I could do this, right? I, I could go to each individual function and update it, say, well, no, I only need three here, not seven, and do that manually. But that's quite the task. Let's fix this. So in steps, a function called search. The search function will allow us to search a string, a collection of values like Patrick Marlowe. It allows us to search that for a specific character. Well, what do you think I'm going to search for? Am I going to search for A or M? What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to get just the first name, right? So what should I search for? The space. I need to know where the space is at. So let's try this once again. I'm gonna jump back into B2. To make this a little bit easier, I'll go back to formulas, text, and I'm gonna find, I'm not gonna start with search. I want I'll, The whole purpose here is I wanna extract the first name. The first names are where, positionally, where's first name at? It's on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna use left. All right, first thing, wants to know, hey, well, where's the text at? A2. Simple. 
Well, next part's not so simple. We need to know a dynamic number of characters, right? I can't just put seven in there. We saw that problem earlier. Well, here, we're going to find the space using the search function. And really what the search function does, it returns the position of that character we're searching for. Watch this. So I'm going to say search, open up a parentheses, and once again, to make this easier, I'm going to click up into my formula bar into the search function. Here we go. Search has three things. Find what text, where am I going to find it, and is there a specific character that you want me to start at? What number position do you want me to start with? We're not going to use that. But I'm going to tell it to find the space. And the way that I do this is by doing quote, space, quote. Literally, whatever we put in the quotes is literally what Excel will search for. In this case, we're searching for a space. So just two quotes with a space in between. Now, where's it going to find it? Well, it's going to find it inside of A2. Look at this. We're searching for a space inside of A2, which is Patrick Marlowe. And it says, hey, it's at the eighth position. P-A-T-R-I-C-K, that's seven. And eight is a space. Look at that. It found it. So now I'll go back to left. I'm going to click on left up here at the top. So we've told it, hey, I want you to look at cell A2, and I want you to give me this number of characters, this dynamic range of characters, right? Find the eight. I'll hit OK. There's Patrick, and I'll copy it down. Joe, Brent, Joe, and Martin. A dynamic number here. We're not just dropping in the seven or three, having to update formulas manually, but we're using nesting, we're taking the search function, nesting it into the left function, and able to extract the first names. Now, let's try this once again. This is going to take it a step further. I want to get last name. Well, this one's going to be a bit more involved. Let's think about this for a moment. I need to get the last names. Where are the last names at? Positionally, where are they at? They're on the right. Marlowe, Thornton, Burns, Pawlowski, Jones. Right? They're on the right-hand side of that cell. Well, we know we have a right function, right? We can say this. I can say equal, right, open parentheses. Okay. Wants to know two things. Wants to know where the text is at. Well, mine's inside of A2, comma. But now wants to know how many characters. And it's different all over again, right? We got Marlowe, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 characters. We got Thornton, which is 8 characters. Burns, which is 5 characters, and so on. So we're stuck in that same situation once again. Now, could I use the search? Let's try this out. What if I bring in search? Now, I'm going to open up my function window. I'm going to hit the little FX button here. Let's see if this will help me out at all. Let's see. Returns the number of characters at a specific at which a specific character or string is first found. Reading left to right. And it's not case sensitive. Reading left to right. Well, where are our names at? Our names are on the right-hand side. I'm not trying to read left to right. I'm trying to read the other direction to get the last name. So using the search all by itself isn't really going to help me here. I'm going to cancel out. All right. We're going to bring in one more function here. Okay. It's going to get a little bit messy. There's a little bit more involved here, but we're creating this very dynamic, very robust function that's going to do all this work for us. Watch this. So I'm going to go into C, C2. Now, remember, I want to extract from the right-hand side. So I'm going to go into text, and I'm going to grab my right function. All right, where's my text at? Well, it's inside of A2. There it is. Number of characters. Now, here's where it gets tricky. And we're going to do a little bit of math. We talked about earlier the len function, the length function, which returns the number of characters within a cell. I'm going to bring the len in here. I'll say len, L-E-N, and I'm going to grab A2. I'll close the parentheses. So now I'm just using the length function to tell me how many characters are in that cell. Oh, well, there's 15. Patrick, Marlowe, with a space, there's 15 characters. Okay, great. Well, you know what? I only need Marlowe, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. Well, but then Thornton's 
eight characters and Burns is five characters and so on, right? So I know total number of characters, but now I need to know the difference, right, between the total number and the actual count of last name. Well, how can we find that? We'll use the search function. And I'm going to do some subtraction here. I'm going to say take that length, which is total of 15 or whatever, and subtract the search. Find that space again. So I'm going to make this easier. I'm going to click on search up here. And we're going to find the empty space. So quote, space quote. We're going to find it within this text, Patrick Marlowe. And I'm going to click back into the right function. All right. I think I'm feeling good about this. We got A2. We got number of characters, which is going to be the total length, 15, minus how many characters it found to that space. Essentially, from P on, we're going to subtract that off. And it tells me we got seven. Is that right? M-A-R-L-E-A-U, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. I'll hit OK. And there's Marlowe. Let's try this out. I'm going to drag it down. Thornton, Burns, Pawlowski, and Jones. So by doing a little bit of nesting, we're using the right function, but in order to get a dynamic number back, we'll first find out how many characters are in there, use the lint function, and then we'll subtract the previous characters up to the space, whatever that is, whether it's eight characters or four characters or six characters, whatever it is. But by nesting, we're creating this much more dynamic much more robust, much more reusable function. Remember, don't, don't do this manually. Get Excel to do it for you. So try this out. First, get the first name. Use that left function. Use the search function to find that dynamic number. Once you get a grasp on that, try out the last name. Get a feel for working with these left-right functions, but then bringing in these other functions, nesting them in to make it more dynamic.